Hello dreamers, how are you? Welcome back to my channel for a new appointment with my tutorials. For this week we return to talk about my recent project on Assassin's Creed. There is still a lot that I wanted to show you about this short. Today in detail we will see the first part with the animation of the leaves and the parallax effect of the background while Yasuke runs. There will then be one last video still for the final part and the animation of the log. I take this opportunity to tell you that I'm working on a new animated project that will keep us company for the next few weeks. Also because I have a lot of work up here. And now a sneak peek. As you can see there is still a lot of work to do and above all I am experimenting with the new animation techniques that will take some time to develop. But stay connected if you want to know more. And for those who are not subscribed to the channel, if you like, subscribe. For me it's very important and thank you for your support. And now let's get started. First thing we see today is this. In the initial part of the video there are these leaves flying with a very realistic and 3D effect. This is a rig animation. But why didn't I do a frame by frame? I wanted first of all a more three-dimensional and fluid effect and with the Dreams tools I think I succeeded. Then you know my laziness in drawing frame by frame and so for me it's the best method for an animation of this kind. After removing some stuff that we don't need for the moment, let's focus on the leaves. Obviously the compromise to make a fast animation with many elements compared to the frame by frame will be that each leaf takes up a track and be careful this could overload your project and you will have to learn to dose the number of tracks to avoid problems. But if as in this case the animation is for a few seconds you can allow yourself to work well by adding a few tracks. But if in the future the Savage team finds a solution in this aspect where we can for example move more elements in different ways on a single track, this could give us the possibility of creating complex particle effects that could revolutionize dreams. Let's go back to the leaves. <laughs> there are three animations on each single leaf. Rotation, Scale, and move. Now let's see in detail all the animations, although the most interesting here is the resizing animation that creates this very realistic 3D effect. Moved from right to left, this is to simulate the effect of the wind moving the leaves. I wanted a smooth and constant movement to make the leaf appear on one side of the screen and then disappear on the left. So I set the trend curve to linear. For the rotation this case is also very simple. It's not very important whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. In fact the more varied the rotations of the leaves are the more realistic the effect will be. We can give a precise value or work our imagination by rotating the leaf as we wish. Very important thing is not to make rotations too fast. The physics that moves the leaves, which in this case is the wind, acts in a irregular way of course, but with the same force and the elements will have to react similarly for an effect that maintains realistic physics. Now let's see the main animation which creates even more three-dimensionality to the leaves. 
I worked on the scale. As you will have understood, obviously, the anchor point is in the center of the shape. This then allows the scaling on the center of the leaf. The scaling on Y in this case, regardless of the value we have, is obtained in the initial keyframe with a positive value, in the final keyframe with a negative value. This allows us to invert the shape. I can also create more complex animations by scaling the X value. In a portion of the timeline we do animation on Y, for example, and in the next one on X. Being careful not to overlap the keyframes, otherwise it could get messy. You would get a simple resizing, but being able to work independently on the coordinates and squashing the shape first on the x-axis and then to the y, we can create more complex and varied animations. Then going to duplicate the leaves on new overlapping tracks, I created this foliage that flutters as an intro to the short. So remember, for animations of this kind, we can work first of all on different tracks to move the same element with a different dynamic, shape that we can move with the Move and Scale tool acting on the movement, rotation and resizing in such a way independently. Now we move on to the next stage where the samurai runs towards his enemies. Here we find the parallax effect where the background moves together with the character. But before we get there we first find a camera movement or rather a camera shake which makes the scene very dynamic. This is a random movement that if you haven't seen I recommend that you recover the video tutorial on camera shake. If I go to expand the track of the coordinates of the move and scale tool here with the performance mode I tried to replicate the movements of the steps with a really interesting result. For animations of this type the performance mode is really useful because it allows us to be very precise with the camera movements and above all it speed up the workflow without having to manually set each keyframe. At the most we have to make some small corrections. For the parallax effect there are various elements that move on the screen to give the idea that our character is running inside the scenario. In short, if you haven't understood yet, it's the scenario that runs from right to left to create all the movement. I'll remove some lens blur to help you understand better. We don't even need the leaves, ok. First thing we notice are the bamboo trees in the foreground. There are some on various levels, some like this one for example much larger and therefore much closer to the camera. The secret here is that the closer they are to the viewer's eyes the faster they will have to pass. Going in slow motion as you can see the trees in front move faster than those farther back and this already serves to create an illusion of movement but above all three-dimensionality within the scene. Here you can appreciate the dynamics of the movement even better. I then also added the lens blur filter for the bamboo trees in the foreground. This further increases the perception of three-dimensionality and the movement. And here the final result. First step, camera movement that moves in correspondence with the character's steps and the parallax effect on the bamboo trees, but there are other elements still to take into consideration and that is the movement of the ground and the background. I removed some stuff so you can better understand all the elements I inserted to give movement to the background. What stands out are definitely the typical Japanese walls. We will soon see all the parts that make it and how I gave it life, but first a simpler aspect and that is the ground. Its operation is very similar to one of my previous projects on One Piece that I recommend you and go and recover if you haven't seen it yet. There are many interesting things to see and learn. 
This large rectangular shape that you see is then a texture drawn on Procreate, with the distortion tool and arranged in perspective to give the impression that the ground has the correct depth within the scene. Then with the move and scale tool it moves from right to left so that the samurai can run over it. A bit like he was on a treadmill. <laughs> At this point the ground and the background stop and the scene continues, with the anchor point fixed on the upper side of the shape by resizing only the Y axis I go to widen the terrain, combined with the zoom on the wall group that contains the scene you get a very interesting effect like from eagle's eye view. Does anyone remember this in Assassin's Creed? <laughs> I think this is one of the most interesting effects that can be done here on Dreams. Your projects come to life with camera movements like this. It's something I wanted to say that you can use them in any style you use. The only limit is your imagination. There are more elements that make up the wall that slide on the background. Now I'm going to hide some of them to help you better understand how it works. These elements, as you see, in separate groups. In this case it was important that there was always something on the screen without interruptions and without having to draw a single very long wall that ran behind Yasuke. Inside each group we find two shapes the wall in the background and the part above which constitutes the roof. In the roof I added a distortion animation to make it more three-dimensional. Here you can see it better, the shape distorts as it passes in front of the screen, obviously everything moves very quickly and this detail might be difficult to notice, but as you know I like to work on details, so adding this shape that distorts to create the illusion of the slope of the roof was a great way to demonstrate it. <laughs> this not only serves to make me proud of the details I add to my projects, but also to give continuity to other groups that come later. And we come to the next step, which is to make sure that the parts of the wall pass quickly behind the samurai without interruptions. Let's take as an example this first group that passes in front of the screen and then moves from right to left in two seconds. Obviously I created the animation with the move and scale tool and as the trend curve we have to set the linear. I'm going to duplicate the entire group and bring it into a track below. And as you can see the more I move it in the timeline the closer it gets to the wall above. I have to find the right point of contact, where the group I'm moving meets the group above, but without them overlapping. We can also help ourselves with an opacity filter to have the shapes a little different so as not to get confused. After a couple of tests we get to this point and all I have to do is move one last frame to make the two parts match perfectly. Obviously now the next parts are missing and I will have to repeat the procedure on a track still below. This system allows us to maintain a continuous flow without interruptions, as I said before without having to draw a very long wall which would be much more difficult to manage. There is one last part that I want to show you and that is the castle door. It's composed of separate elements, in this case two, 
We have the roof, which here too I distorted to give it a correct slope. For now I hide the roof because the really interesting part here is given by the internal walls that create the right depth. The internal corners of the wall distort and resides on the x-axis to create the correct three-dimensionality of the door. And when the camera zooms in towards the door, the shapes widen further to give a realistic effect. If I hide the front walls, this is what happens behind. The roof gives the cover to the door, added the distortion and scaling on the y axis on the fly of the camera, it's as if the viewer is transported inside the castle for a really interesting cinematic effect. We will come back in the next few weeks to talk about three-dimensional effects like this one, that I want to go into more detail with a detailed tutorial. Here we have only quickly glossed over this way of creating animations on Dreams. Today we have reached the end of a fantastic tutorial, from which I'm sure you can take really interesting ideas for your projects. As always, I invite you to write in the comments anything that is not clear, I'm here to help you. Thank you so much for watching and...